What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today we're taking a look at the top 10 sneaker collabs of 2019 so far. Like the last couple years, 2019 has been pretty incredible for sneaker collaborations, better than I think most of us expected. And even though we're just over halfway through the year of 2019, I feel like we've had a full year's worth of collaborations already. So because of that, I wanted to pick out 10 of the best collaborations that dropped so far this year. And to be honest, it was a lot harder than I expected because there was a lot more collabs than I even realized. So I went to my Twitter at RealSethFowler and I asked to you guys what collaborations you thought deserved to be on the list. And because of that, a lot of the shoes that are on the list and the order of the list is heavily informed by what you guys said on Twitter. But why don't I stop wasting your time and let's jump right into the list. Number 10, the Adidas Arizona Young One. Just last month, Adidas and Arizona collaborated on four different sneakers that were designed to look like Arizona cans, which I thought was a pretty cool concept. Two of the shoes were designed to look like the Arizona on a green tea can and the other two were designed to look like the sweet tea can. The shoe that I'm specifically picking for the number 10 spot on this list is the Arizona Green Tea Young One because it's probably the most iconic out of the group. This young one comes in sort of a greenish teal color that covers the entirety of the shoe, both the upper, the midsole, and the outsole. On top of the upper, you've actually got these embroidered pink flowers just like the Arizona can. This detail gives the shoe a super unique and out there look, and you definitely stand out when you're wearing this sneaker. One of my favorite details on the shoe though is actually the 99 cent tag at the top of the tongue. Not only does it look good and represent what's actually on the Arizona can, but the craziest part about this collaboration is that originally, these shoes were supposed to sell for 99 cents, like the Arizona can. All four of these shoes were dropping exclusively at an Arizona Adidas pop-up shop in New York City, and each one of them was selling for 99 cents. And of course, when you price a shoe at 99 cents, people are gonna lose their minds. And because of that, there were so many people at this event, and the event got so crazy that the police actually had to shut it down. Now to be fair, this entire collaboration seems like more of a marketing stunt than an actual sneaker collaboration, but the fact that these shoes cause that much commotion it's pretty interesting. A few days later, Adidas and Arizona did actually drop the sneakers online in very limited quantities, so the people who really wanted them could buy them then or buy them for resale. And I've gotta say, while the shoes do look good and they're interesting, they're not the most beautiful shoes in the world. I think the most interesting thing about this collaboration was the marketing. I think the fact that they were selling these shoes for 99 cents is insane, and that's what I love about it. Adidas and Arizona were actually nice enough to send me over the full pack, so if you guys would like to see the unboxing of all four sneakers, make sure to click the link at the top of the screen. Number nine. The Nike Air Fear of God 1 in yellow. This shoe actually dropped at Complex Con in Chicago as a sneaker stash, and I was able to grab a pair because I was there, only to have it canceled the next day. So that sucked. Honestly, this might have been my favorite color of the Nike Air Fear of God 1s, and no, I don't think it's the most wearable. I think the black pair or the original tan pair are probably the most wearable pair, but there was something about the color scheme on that silhouette that just looked really good. Now, to be honest, I wasn't actually gonna put this shoe on the list at all because it came out last year and there had already been so much coverage of it, I just didn't feel like it was that new and exciting anymore. But a lot of you guys on Twitter really love this sneaker. Maybe not this colorway, but this sneaker. So for that reason, felt like it deserved to be number nine. The Fear of God 1 is a brand new silhouette created by Jerry Lorenzo and Nike, which usually doesn't happen in collaborations. Usually when a brand or a person collaborates with Nike, they come out with a new colorway or a new version of a shoe that already exists. But with the Fear of God and Nike collaboration, Jerry Lorenzo has already released like three new silhouettes that never existed before, which I think is kind of crazy. The Fear of God 1 is obviously the most popular of those silhouettes and of course commands the highest price on the resale market. Not only is the yellow pair released this year, but we've also had a green version a yellow version and a white version. And actually the light bone colorway didn't drop in the US till the beginning of this year. So technically the light bone didn't release until this year as well. Overall, I think the Fear of God 1 is a great shoe. I love the fact that it's actually designed for the court, but it looks more like a lifestyle sneaker. I think that's really cool. And yes, it might not be the easiest shoe to wear in the world, but I think it's a cool sneaker nonetheless. And I really like what Jerry Lorenzo is doing with Nike. Number eight, the undercover Nike Daybreak. Jun Takahashi, the designer behind Undercover, is collaborating with Nike once again, this time around on the Daybreak silhouette. Undercover updated the classic nylon and suede silhouette with a brand new heel counter, which definitely gives the shoe a unique look. To be completely honest, I don't really love this shoe, I just think the heel counter is overkill. But that's just me, and a lot of you guys on Twitter and just on the internet in general really seem to love this sneaker. I gotta hand it to Undercover and Nike, it's a unique look, it's an interesting sneaker, I don't think it's a bad looking sneaker, it's just not my taste. And if it's something that you like, it's definitely definitely worth going for. And honestly, I'm a pretty big fan of the Undercover and Nike collaborations so far up to this point, so I'm pretty excited to see what else they do in the future. Number seven, the Trophy Room Air Jordan 5. 
Trophy Room is a sneaker store in Florida that was created by Michael Jordan's son, Marcus Jordan. Trophy Room has definitely had some solid collaborations in the past, but I think these Trophy Room 5s are by far my favorite. The shoe comes in a light blue suede upper, which is not a color we usually see on Air Jordan 5s or even Air Jordans in general. To contrast the look, there's a bright red sock liner and bright red shark teeth, and I think together with that light blue, it's a super unique and super good looking Air Jordan 5. The shoe comes with the Trophy Room logo embroidered onto the heel, and it also comes with a cork insole, which I think is a nice touch. The packaging is also done really well. It comes in a white box with gold accents and a white dust bag with the gold Trophy Room logo. I can't say enough good things about this collaboration. I think they knocked it out of the park, and it's one of my favorite Air Jordan 5s to drop in years. Number six, the Cactus Plant Flea Market Vapor Max 2019s. Cactus Plant Flea Market is a newer brand that came out over the last couple years, and since then has been adopted by Pharrell and Kanye as one of their favorite fashion brands. This Vapor Max 2019 collaboration was unfortunately a women's only release, even though a lot of guys really wanted this shoe. Just because it was a women's only release doesn't mean a lot of guys didn't buy this shoe though. The idea behind this concept was that this collaboration was supposed to have sort of a handmade feel, which you can definitely tell from that 3D wobbly Nike swoosh. The swoosh is probably the most defining detail on the shoe and is actually made up by Garden Wiring. Not only that, but the collab also features a crazy double-faced smiley face on the heel of the sneaker. And the darker color scheme of the shoe, which is complemented by the red on the outsole, is actually meant to depict sort of the dust time and dawn time of the city. It's a really unique look, and even though I don't love the Vapor Max silhouette, I think this is probably my favorite Vapor Max that's ever released. I just think it's such a unique and interesting looking sneaker. A lot of people were really hyped on this release, and I actually think it's one of the best releases of the year. Number five, the Bodega New Balance 997S, no days off. New Balance has really burst onto the scene this year with some excellent sneaker collaborations. Of course, we've got the Kawhi Leonard Signature Basketball sneaker, which is consistently sold out, even though it's only come out in two different colorways. And of course, this ultra limited and really excellent looking Bodega 997S collaboration. Bodega is a Boston-based sneaker boutique, and of course, New Balance is also based in Boston, so it was kind of a match made in heaven. The Bodega 997S features really premium materials, like really nice suede, on the midfoot and on the toe, and also the purple, gray, and black color scheme used on the shoe is excellent. The idea behind this collaboration is that it's designed to be worn, and I don't know how I feel about that because a lot of people say that about their collaborations now, but I still think it's an excellent collaboration, it's a great looking sneaker, and a lot of shoes do actually look better the more that they're worn in. I think the pairing of a great color scheme on a really underrated silhouette makes this sneaker pop, and I think it's one of the best collaborations to drop this year. And unfortunately, if you're trying to grab a pair, it's too late. It sold out instantly and resale right now is upwards of $600. Number four, the Air Max One Susan Missing Link. This shoe is created in collaboration between Leica Animation Studios and Nike. Leica is owned by Travis Knight, the son of Phil Knight, the co-founder of Nike. And so it only makes sense that they've done a lot of collaborations. But I've gotta say, all their collaborations have been really well executed. This Air Max One was inspired by the Leica movie, Missing Link. The aesthetics of the shoe are inspired by the main character's outfit, and I've gotta say, I love the plaid details. I also think that the color palette that they used for this shoe is really good as well. The greens, the yellows, the browns, everything just comes together so nicely on this Air Max One, it's an awesome shoe. Another interesting detail is that the midsole is actually designed to look like it's covered in leather, which I think is a really cool touch. Even if I didn't know that this shoe was a collaboration, I would still be drawn to it because I think it's a really nicely designed shoe. And I think that is the essence of a good collaboration, a shoe that whether you know what it is or not, you're still drawn to it. And I think they did a great job with it. Number three, the Travis Scott Air Jordan One High. Just about everyone that I've talked to considers this sneaker already sneaker of the year. And I don't totally know if I agree with that, but I still think it's a really well executed collab. However, the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 has definitely taken 2019 by storm. It's probably the most coveted sneaker of the year. If you're somehow not familiar with this sneaker, it's a white and brown Air Jordan 1 defined by the oversized backwards Nike swoosh on the lateral side. It still really surprises me that this is the first time that they've done that on an Air Jordan 1. I mean, I do understand that there's brand guidelines and logo restrictions and things like that, but I don't really understand what Travis could have done to change Nike's mind about the swoosh on this particular pair when they haven't changed the swoosh since 1985. Maybe a backward swoosh on an Air Jordan 1 has already been done before and I just forgot, but whatever the case may be, I think it's an awesome look on this sneaker. However, if that was the only thing that was different about this collaboration from standard Air Jordan 1s, 
it wouldn't be that great of a collab. Not only did they turn around the Nike swoosh, they also added the Cactus Jack branding on the medial side, they added the sicko mode face, I think it's a sicko mode face, on the heel, and then they also added a stash pocket around the sock liner of the shoe. There are so many little changes about this shoe that really make this collab stand out, and it's so much more than just a backwards Nike swoosh. And I'm gonna be honest, organizing the placement of these last three shoes on the list was really tough, and I think any one of these shoes could have been number one, two, or three. So just because the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 is at number three doesn't mean it couldn't be number one. Number two, the Air Jordan 1 SB LA to Chicago. Now let me preface this by saying for me, this is my favorite sneaker release of the year. I love this shoe. So I probably will put it at the top of all my lists, but I'm trying to be somewhat impartial on this video, so it's number two. Now some of you might be saying, what are you talking about? Why is this on this list? This isn't a collaboration, it's a Nike sneaker. Well, technically, Nike SB and Jordan brand are separate entities, so it is a collaboration, and yes, they're both under the Nike umbrella, but it is still technically a collaboration. If you know me at all, you know that the Jordan 1 is my favorite silhouette of all time. So it makes sense that this is one of my favorite sneaker releases of the year. But the reason I like this shoe so much is not just because it's a Jordan 1, it's because of what this Jordan 1 can do. First of all, for someone who's never seen this shoe before, it just kind of looks like a standard Lakers Air Jordan 1. But the cool feature of this shoe is that that Lakers paint actually rubs off to reveal a Chicago Air Jordan 1. As the Nike SB or Nike skateboarding collaboration would hint at, this shoe was designed to be skated in. So the more you skate in the shoe, the more beat up it gets, and the more the paint wears off. I absolutely love that about the shoe. I love the fact that the more you wear it, the more it starts to look like a completely different and brand new sneaker. Not only that, but because it's a Nike SB collab, the insole itself actually features its own air unit, which isn't usually on a standard Air Jordan 1. But air unit aside, of course there have been other shoes that Nike has created where the paint wears off the more you wear it. In fact, there was already an Air Jordan 1 Nike SB collab, the Lance Mountains, that started out as a black and white pair and became a bread and royal pair. But for me, what's so special special about this pair, other than the fact that it came out this year, is that both colorways of the shoe, in my opinion, are excellent. I love the Lakers colorway and I love the Chicago's colorway. I didn't really feel that way about the Lance Mountains. The black and white pair were just kind of boring when the paint was still on there. With the LA to Chicago, I would be happy with either colorway, and that's why I think I like the shoe so much. I also really love how creative people have gotten with this pair, how they've rubbed away certain parts of the paint to create different kinds of designs. I think that's such a cool thing. There was also a second colorway that released with the LA to Chicago's called the NYC to Paris, and they started out as a gray, white, and black sneaker and turned into a pink and white sneaker, which I don't think I like as much. The sneaker is the same, the concept is the same, but the colorways just aren't as interesting. And I feel like they could have had two hits on their hand if they made the gray turn into something else. I don't know what it could have been, but something else. But at the end of the day, the LA to Chicago's are probably my favorite release of the year, and they're an Air Jordan 1. It doesn't get much better than that. Number one, the Sakai Nike LD Waffle. This is a collab that kind of came out of nowhere, and not a collab that I actually thought that I was going to like when I first saw it. Sakai is a designer brand created by designer Shitoze Abe. And because of that, this Nike and Sakai collab was first teased on the runway. The idea behind the Sakai collaboration is that they took two different Nike models and mashed them together to create one brand new model. And unlike a lot of the sneaker mashups that have come out over the years, that aren't very popular, they literally mash these shoes together. Like, it looks like one shoe is inside of the other. That concept becomes very obvious in the LD Waffle with the dual midsole. There's actually a panel that sticks out from the back of the standard midsole that almost looks like a tail. Not only that, but because they mash two sneakers together, the shoe also features two separate tongues, two Nike swooshes, and two overlay details. It's a really out there concept, and that's what I love about it. It's different. It's something that we haven't really seen before. And not only that, the colorways that they chose are crazy because it's like they took two different colorways on two different sneakers and mashed them together as well. You've got crazy bright blues and reds and yellows, and then if you don't want that crazy sort of color scheme, you've also got really high contrast whites and blacks. It's an all-around insane collaboration, and whether you prefer the LD Waffle or the Blazer that she also collaborated on, you can't really go wrong. And that's why I think the Sakai Nike LD Waffle is the best collaboration to release in 2019 so far. But that pretty much wraps up the list of the top 10 best sneaker collaborations of 2019 so far. Now I would love to know your list and which shoes you think deserve to be on the list that weren't or which shoes you thought didn't deserve to be on the list. So make sure to leave those comments in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.